Hello. In this talk, I'm going to um, explore how we make distinctions and how that impacts the way in which we learn and, um, and the way in which we make progress. Um, I would say it's our ability to make distinctions that, that can allow us to learn. It's, it's the actual mechanism through which we, we learn things. Um, so what do I mean by making a distinction? <clears throat> I think in, in its most fundamental uh, sense, it's noticing the differences between one experience and another. Uh, so there, there's a process of comparing one thing to another. And it's, I would say first and foremost, it's, it's comparing and noticing what is different here or what is similar here. Um, and I wanna make a distinction between uh, that comparison and noticing differences and similarities versus an evaluation. Because an evaluation is kind of an, uh, another step that you can do and there, there are times and places to make evaluations, but, but the real um, kind of the real substance of learning is our ability to make distinctions and to notice how we're doing in a particular realm. And so there, there are a couple of examples that I use as a point of reference for myself. Um, one is wine tasting. And, and let me say for the record, <laughs> for anyone who's watching, I'm not an expert in wine tasting. I'm, I'm, I might be an expert in uh, some other foods, but just the, the endeavor of becoming good at wine tasting, I think is a really useful um, example or kind of living metaphor for what I'm talking about. And in, in the beginning, if, if you're a, a novice at doing something like wine tasting, you might only be able to detect the most uh, vast differences. So, it, it, you know, if you had a blindfold on, you might only be able to tell the difference between, say, a red wine and a white wine which is, you know, it, it's a dramatic difference. And it would be much, much harder for you to notice, first of all, to notice and then to articulate what are the differences, say, in two very close varietals in red wine, right? If you were contrasting a couple Pinot Noir, it, you're going to, the, the differences are going to be much more subtle. And I think um, that principle of, you know, that, Typically, we start with kind of gross distinctions and then gradually work to finer and finer distinctions is, is useful. Um, another principle is to uh, kind of eliminate as much noise from the, the system or eliminate as much noise from wherever you're trying to make a distinction as possible. So what I mean by that is we, we actually want to Kind of clear as many variables as possible if we're going to compare two things so if again if i was comparing two wines and i'm comparing two wine i'm comparing two wines in the midst of 30 different types of wine it's going to be hard for me to really notice differences um, and to keep track of everything so instead if i only have two in front of me then I can make distinctions. In, um, it's interesting in the Feldenkrais uh, kind of method of uh, kind of physical exploration. One of the things that he talked about was um, to to move as small as possible. And he he used this this uh, this metaphor of he said if you're holding a, a, a bowling ball. And, and a fly landed on it, you wouldn't notice it. But if you're holding a feather and a fly landed on it, then you're able to make that distinction because you've, you've cleared out all the clutter in, in your nervous system so you can make this very subtle distinction. And that's why, it, back to wine tasting, that, that's why they'll have some bread or something to clear your palate after each example. Now, one of the places that I like to do this is in comparing different um, aspects of my experience. So, for example, I'll, I'll, 
I'll sit there and compare two different emotional states. And I, I, might, I might pick two states, like say, um, might sound funny, but I might pick frustration on the one hand and anticipation on the other hand. And I'll go back and forth and back and forth to notice, okay, what's going on in my physical body when I'm in each of those states? What is my thinking like? What distinctions do I notice in my thinking when I'm frustrated versus anticipating? Um, what am I picturing? What am I hearing? Um, what's my general sense of time? What's the time frame? Is it a Am I in the moment? Is it a very narrow time frame, or is it more of a landscape that it's, you know, I'm thinking about the future, or the past. So I'll just go back and forth and back and forth with with those two, and and eventually you become a connoisseur of of different types of emotions. And I always like to say emotions for me are like um, they're like signposts. They, you know, they, they let me know if I'm on track or if there's something I need to learn or something I need to process, or am I off track and I, I need to get back on track. So I might use this, this um, exploration of distinctions in terms of two uh, emotions. I also might similarly just contrast uh, my state from moment to moment. Now, maybe not just like now and uh, a minute later, but um, I, might, I might sit for a moment and kind of check in with myself, like, how am I doing right now? And then sometimes it's fun to compare like, well, how was I yesterday? And what's different? You know, or how was I a week ago or a month ago or a year ago? And, and at each different time frame, I'm gonna notice different qualities of distinctions some very gross and, and big, large, um, like, like maybe, uh, you know, uh, you know, three months ago, I went on a trip. So I was in a different location. That's a very big difference. But um, day to day, I might be in the same place. And then so it's, did my mood fluctuate? Um, did my level of activity fluctuate? So there's so many distinctions, so many things that you can become entertain with and learn from. Um, uh, I forget who said this, but they, they said the smallest unit of learning is difference. So whenever you detect a difference, that's an opportunity to learn something, to, to say, okay, if I do something one way, uh, it'll have one repercussion. If I do something another way, it has a different effect. So um, this is sort of an ongoing tool, but it, for me, it's a, it's a very, um, it's a topic that I'm very passionate about because it's, it's really where everything happens. Um, you know, even if you read about something in a book, uh, that might give you an idea, but it's not until you kind of taste something in your experience that you can verify, yes, this is, this is something that's having an impact or in, in NLP, this is the difference that makes a difference. It's like, what's the one variable that kind of causes a cascade of movement where there wasn't one before. Um, so I invite you to play with that. And um, it's, it's actually a fun thing. You know, a lot of times people say, how are you doing? And I think it's just a, a, a turn of phrase, you know, very often, People may not even be curious about how you're doing, but um, sometimes I like to sit with myself and ask myself, like, how am I doing? And it, it, it actually brings that phrase to life because it brings me into the moment, into my senses and uh, into experience. And it gives me a way of enjoying things differently moment to moment to moment because every moment is, is vastly different in a certain respect. Um, okay, hope you enjoy that.